Ryan Terry, mostly known by his online alias Cryotic, was an American YouTuber known for playing games of various genres, alongside frequent collabors, most notably having frequently collabed alongside the Swedish king himself, PewDiePie. We have, we have a bomb to defuse right now. Okay, so. I'm waiting for your instructions. Okay. Hello. If, uh, You're okay. taking, uh, why is, what are you shit. looking at? Cut the You're second wire, the second wire. Cry had done it. He had not only became a close friend with the biggest YouTuber at the time, but he was on his way to becoming a YouTube giant in the gaming community. But as most of you know, it would all soon come crumbling down. But what was the timeline of events that evidently led down to his downfall? Well, in today's video, we'll be answering that question. But in order to uncover the answer, we're gonna have to start from the beginning. So sit back, and let me ask this question. Who is Cryotic? Cry started his channel on March 14th, 2006, but it wasn't until August of 2007 where he would upload his first video, titled, Cry's Theme. <laughs> Taking a closer look at his older videos, it seemed that he was on and off with his channel, basically just shit posting. but it wasn't until September 27th, 2010, where he would upload his very first amnesia-centered video, titled, Cry Plays Amnesia, the Dark Descent, Part 1. Okay, um... Amnesia, The Dark Descent... I, uh... I hate horror games. I am a coward. After this video, he'd mostly center his topic around amnesia. This would spiral him and his channel into a horror-focused channel. But occasionally, he would break away from the horror content in favor of other trending games. Okay, I've been fighting this bastard for like two hours now. I'm gonna win this time. Okay, you son of a bitch. Okay. Besides that, it's safe to say his channel was mostly horror oriented, but years later, it would seem that he got more comfortable and experimented with non-horror games on his channel. The light at the end of the tunnel seemed bright for the Cryotic channel. He had a successful YouTube channel, gaining hundreds if not thousands of subs every day, collabing frequently alongside the likes of PewDiePie and Markiplier, and had a devoted audience of active viewers in his fanbase. So, what the fuck happened? The year was 2020, and YouTube scandals was in its first wave, with many content creators becoming victims of cancel culture, either being deplatformed for their internet degeneracy or mishaps. And one of those who was deplatformed was Cry, who was accused of engaging in sexual explicit activities with over 15 women, of which some were underage at the time. Words seemingly broke out as a part of a first wave of countless allegations against Cry. On June 21st, 2020, Cry would come out with a Twitter post confirming all the allegations against him, and even making a YouTube video talking about it, which was around 4 minutes, with it receiving a lot of backlash with context alone. And its video was titled Cry Talk. We stopped being genuine a long time ago. Before you start to think you're a fucking hypocrite, I want you to understand that I'm coming at this from a perspective of Someone who genuinely does not like Pass Me because Pass Me was immature. Following its release, members of the Twitter slash gaming community started combing through their past and present and discovering that their personal confession was merely the tip of a massive iceberg. So without further ado, let's just see how depraved my childhood icon truly was. The video, although framing itself as an apology video, was a very lackluster and glossed over major part of the problem and the situation at hand. In the video, he claimed to have been in a dark place, giving vague wisdom about taking accountability, while denying that no physical contact had taken place, and that he was unaware of the girl's ages. Which, spoiler alert, was a lie. He cheated on his girlfriend with multiple minors, which was proving true, although these conversations never got sexual, but he did groom them into thinking that when they turn of age, that they'll be the one to win Cry's heart. And when they turned 18, 
That's when it turned sexual. You see, he never got sexual with them when they were underage, but did when they were. Truly depraved. His video just comes off as plain sympathy baby. The situation was so bad, to the point that the authorities, and yes, even the FBI, got into the situation. But from my knowledge, nothing has come from that. Since then, it has been two years since Cry was active on any of his platforms, with him being banned on Twitch and strangely even changing his PFP to an image saying, more to come on Twitter. Former fans have compiled a timeline of events on Reddit with links to all the public accusations against Cry, with his actions dating all the way back to 2011. So let's give a quick rundown of all the important parts. June 18th, 2020. Twitter user Beanie makes a post detailing an encounter with the 22 year old Cry when she was 16. 2011. I was 16 when I became a fan, soon after, a friend. You were 22. I admired and cared for the person you were, not the persona you put up. I developed feelings for you, and you knew. You never discouraged them, just amusingly kept me at arm's length for when you felt lonely. On my 18th birthday, things took a turn, and I was too blinded by rose-colored glasses to see what had actually happened to me. On my graduation day, you told me you couldn't return my feelings as you were too busy messing around with your best friend's girl said I was a good backup option though. You still kept me for those 2am calls when you had no one else. I started my first year of college when you told me there was someone else. Found out later, they weren't of age either. But again, rose colored glasses. I thought I was special because you kept me around when you were lonely. I made terrible decisions with you. Ones that hurt people, I cared for. And I have to live with that. I was 20 when I told you I couldn't do that anymore and that I was hurting. I always remember the response I got back, in which you told me that the only use I'd ever have to you was as a piece of ass. I told your girlfriend at the time everything. I woke up the next morning and you were gone, as was the community and fandom I felt comfortable and safe in for years. I was 24 when we connected again. I was looking for something, an apology, closure, I don't know, something to fix the years of being used as your personal therapist and toy. It didn't take long for you to start up old habits. I just wanted an innocent friendship with you. I've since learned that many other young and impressionable girls with similar stories. I didn't want a public Twitter apology. I wanted a change of behavior. I'm 25 now and what I want most of all is freedom. I'll never get back the pieces of me that you took back, but I can never replace them with something better. If I'm holding on to the hurt you gave me for any reading, Thank you for letting me share this. Her account detailed behavior indicative of grooming, which continued till her 18th birthday, at which things were turned sexual. The tweet also mentioned that Cry was messing around with his best friend's girlfriend at the time, which I should mention was on Cry's payroll with a group called The Late Night Crew. Like I said before this, this would spawn many allegations against Cry, detailing accusations of Cry threatening to self-harm, sending explicit pictures to minors, and even more allegations of grooming, with the number of accusations summing up to about 18 victims. This brings us to the year of 2022. Cry has been silent on all his platforms, seemingly appearing that he has disappeared from the internet completely. And I think it's fair to say, we won't hear anything from Cry for a while. It's amazing to research and even be there when this drama went down. A YouTuber with so many influential and huge YouTubers behind him, on the scale of PewDiePie, was reduced to a footnote in YouTube history, being reduced to just another internet degenerate. So, what should you take away from this video? Hmm. Yeah, don't talk to minors. I've been Weezes, and until next time, subscribe to the channel!
It's been so long, guys. I have missed you guys. Wee's Army.